Uh, hello everybody. Welcome to another Ride Along with Goggles. And uh, yeah, once again, we're, we're going <laughs> to just dive in here, do something totally crazy. But before we do, we're going to have a quick peek around the yard here in uh, Sydney, Montana. And this is just a sneak peek again, another quick look at Har... Um, oh boy, I almost said Harvin. Um, uh, Recon's yard here. And uh, it's pretty cool. So we're kind of leaning towards this Wildcat trucking, which is a real outfit in Sydney. And uh, although the yard location is on the on the spot occupied by a different company, but uh, it's all up in the air. We're we're messing around with it, and like you know, we'll just see what happens. But um, uh, we'll just take a quick peek around the yard here, and then I'm gonna I'm gonna pause the video. We're gonna I'm gonna go get a load. And it's going to be on this insane trailer. This is an oil field uh, trailer here. And uh, you can see it's wider. And the ones I'm used to seeing when I was in the oil field were uh, they didn't have dollies on them. I think this one has. Well, maybe this one doesn't have any. Okay. Well, maybe that's the difference. There's two trailers. But these things are meant to be used with uh, winch trucks like we have here. Wait a minute. Yakking away. So you see the yard's bigger here. And uh, Recon put the uh, the tracks down. And some oil storage back here. Some Jersey bearers, some frack tanks. And depending on the time of day and different times of day, whatever, there's going to be different amounts of trailers parked here. And trucks over there. And pretty neat. And so anyway, that's... Um, more to come like this is just where it is right now so uh, about the trailer so what we got here we got a, a roll on rear bumper there you can see there's a roller under there and that's for the winch cable to run across and you drop the winch cable over that and you hook it onto the front of that trailer and you pull the trailer up and drag it over that and onto the fifth wheel and these things are usually just sitting on the ground they uh, usually don't have uh, um, dollies or anything. So you see these things lying around. The noses are on the ground. That's kind of an interesting scenario. And it's the HFG Project 3XX with the uh, extended hood again, the EXHD. And uh, yeah, cool truck. Anyway, let's, um, I'll pause and we'll go get a load and have some fun. Well, that didn't go as planned. <laughs> I went and picked up that uh, great big load, the uh, 334,000 pound uh, transformer, and the truck wouldn't steer. Like it just kept going, it just goes straight. And uh, so it's obviously not enough weight on this chassis to deal with that. And um, if it's, yeah, it was really a bummer. That's too bad. I was looking forward to that. So anyway, I. Uh, it's just stopped recording altogether. I went and I downsized the motor a little bit and uh, put a bit more of a highway ratio in the tranny. So we got a 330, 340 gear in here and uh, and less power. And so got the oil field trailer on. And the, this is the mud house that I was talking about, or mud shack as we would have called it. But uh, anyway, we'll talk about it as we go. Let's. Uh, get rolling here see where we're going now picking it up at a this site is a little weird but uh, what can you do get our beacons going here is that beacons on the back no um, Yeah, the whole point of the on a on a drilling rig, the mud is uh, so what the mud what it is is it's all kinds of things really. It's a lubricant and it's a buoyant sort of a body that brings the uh, the drilling uh, refuse from the drill bit up the sh the uh, outside of the pipe inside the casing. And so if you ever wondered how a drilling rig works, like what it does. 
It's definitely got a three, there's three sort of conical shaped Turn right. bits with, you know, tungsten teeth in them, and it rotates, and uh, the drill pipe and the drill collars, which are the weighty bits at the end Turn of the left. drill string, uh, they have a lot of weight, and they help keep the drill string straight. And as you're trying to put weight, you can't add weight other than adding heavy drill collars to the uh, bit end of the drill string. Right. And uh, yards, go straight. you let that down, and you know you're drilling, you know, up to miles sometimes. Go straight. And uh, what happens is. You're drilling through rock once you get, you know, past the dirt layer at the top, and all of that rock. So the needs you need got to be able to get it out of the hole, and you got a miles long hole there. What do you think? How how does it happen? Well, the mud that they mix, it's it looks like a, like a really thin gray watery cement, but very fine, and the mud uh, you. Oops, it's mixed from, generally comes in flat truck loads of bags and is stored uh, on the rig, right, right beside this shack. And the derrickman is usually the guy who runs the mud. And uh, what he does in there, there's a mixing facility. You got your water and you got a big uh, hopper. It's you pour the powder in, you mix it with the right ratio of water, and you you put in uh, various uh, stabilizers, and pH level chemicals, and whatever to make the mud what it needs to be. And the mud goes down through the center of the drill string, and it comes out three nozzles that blow right onto the uh, those conical bits on the end of the drill bit. And as it's rotating and they're turning and they're chewing up the rock, the high pressure jets of mud are uh, lubricating that, cooling it, and at the same time it's under so much pressure it brings all that stone and chips up the outside of the pipe through a steel casing that has been put in place uh, at the dirt level and once you're into the rock, the rock contains the, the mud and it brings it all up to the surface. And it goes out the uh, shale shaker, and uh, the shale shaker takes the shale out, Turn left. deposits it into the sump or wherever you're putting it nowadays, and the mud is recirculated back into the mud tanks and uh, cleaned and reused. And so, the, what you do in this shack is you're making up the for the lost mud. That's you know your lubricant and everything that keeps your drilling operation alive. So there's your little 50 cent tour of mud. <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah, so, and we're in the drilling part of the world uh, over there in, uh, we're uh, recon setting up that shop. So, uh, we had to go to, oh yeah, I had to go to Idaho Falls to get this trip. And we're heading up to uh, uh, Oh, wait a minute. This says my destination is Twin Falls. Oh no, did I grab the wrong load? Better have a look at the map. Oh my word. Oh well, it's going to be a quick trip. <laughs> we'll try not to speed. Yeah, so anyway, um, yeah, this is a pretty cool trailer. So 24 wheels on the trailer. 18 on the back of the truck. It's too bad that this truck won't handle that heavy weight. So and that brings me to Penga. And I got a little... I'm gonna try not to rant here or anything, but I had a thing, you know.
No, I was really liking Pinga stuff. I do like Pinga stuff. That's not changing. But I'm a little disappointed about his. Uh, I went out to his website the other day, and I'd only, I, you know, the last time I purchased something from him was in August. And in August, it was PayPal, just as it always is. And, you know, I sell things every now and then with my little business out in my garage, making Cadillac parts. And uh, I keep my PayPal balance. So I just have money there, and I just pay things with my PayPal balance. And I went to have a look, and he doesn't have PayPal anymore. And you got a thing called Wise going on. If you want to buy something, you got to sign up for this WISE banking system or payment system. I'll tell you, I was a little bit uh, miffed by that. So many people are going to want to run out and sign up for yet another PayPal equivalent. Yeah, I was kind of disappointed. So I don't know if any of you guys use WISE, uh, W-Y-S-E, and uh, if so, what do you think, and uh, is this uh, a mistake by Pinka, or is people still going to buy stuff from them, go through all of that rigmarole and sign up for another payment system? I don't know. Really disappointing. To me, it's disappointing that... You know, I'm kind of, well, maybe I'm a little old-fashioned. I'm happy when the status quo works. And why do you got to change it? You know, I don't know. I don't know if it's a good thing. Maybe you guys know more about this wise business than I do. That being said, I put 100 bucks in it. <laughs> so I put 100 bucks in wise so that if... Uh, it comes down to it, I have to use it, I uh, got it. So, I don't know. So, I don't know if, uh, I, I, I think Pink is in Brazil. And I don't know if it's a security thing, or are they having problems with PayPal, or I don't know what the explanation for it is. Man, I haven't been on this highway in forever. It's a long time since I've driven this one. This is part of that route when I used to be going uh, in the game here uh, down southeast New Mexico way up to Washington. Oh boy, this truck needs uh, stiffening up too. Anyway, um, yeah, I used to be on this road all the time. Just because that's where the, you know, the money loads were, the long haul, and trying to buy another garage, get more drivers. So, yeah, so uh, I mean, we, uh, Recon thinks a uh, reasonable timeline is sometime in the next, you know, maybe three days, two or three days to get the, uh, the new shop out. So, that'll be pretty cool. It's really neat. I, I really, really like it. And uh, as I was mentioning before, he's added... Uh, bunch of trailers to the uh, cargo capability out of those yards, out of all three yards so far, added the Duluth Low Boy and Rudis uh, trailers and uh, his uh, flatbed and Low Boy anyway. I don't think the reefer would have any loads there. But uh, Keep right. pretty neat. The Duluth Low Boy, it really works good on this truck because uh, when we get out here, we'll 
We'll have a look at the uh, at the where the fifth wheel is located. And, uh, the challenge that causes for certain trailers is the fifth wheel is pretty much in the middle of the triaxle arrangement. After 100 yards, turn left. Which isn't necessarily a bad thing, but it's going to cause problems when you want to have a a uh, short neck trailer on it, or a trailer with a regular neck. Turn left. And we'll hop out here and I'll show you. Oh, this light may not have an extended green for us. If we hop out this way, we can see that light. So the fifth wheel is right in, right in the middle there. And so the Deloop Low Boy has the extended neck option. And it works great on this truck. Which is pretty neat. So draw mottings to loop low boy. Yeah, we should be driving up from here a little bit and looking at the truck. But uh, the reason I was mentioned Pinga's truck is it's such a you know, I don't know if you saw those images or the screenshot I put up on Steam of Pinga's truck in an Alberta heavy haul skin, day cab, triaxle with a amazing winch on it. It is cool. But this trailer is really cool. The uh, cargo leaves something to be desired, I think, in my view, but that can mean you can haul a load of plywood on here? On an oil field trailer? That's weird. <laughs> and another load is oil field related it's a frack tank so <laughs> frack, frack tank has wheels uh, a lot less money spent to just run that trailer on its own wheels the uh, parasailer there oh let's do a screenshot that was a good way to remember uh, but anyway yeah why would you put a frack, uh, frack tank which weighs 18,000 pounds or less on this trailer with 24 wheels. Yeah, it doesn't add up. Go straight. So, but apparently uh, Recon was reading the notes on this trailer and apparently the, uh, the mod author is working on an update for the cargos. I, ho oops, I hope it's a bit of a realism update. can't see much of the truck. Keep left. After 50 yards, turn left. Oh man, we're here already. Turn left. It's over. Bringing the mud shack to the Home Depot. Okay. I guess I got some big drilling project going on here. You have reached your destination. Okay, so... Well, it could be a bit of a challenge with this trailer. It's not overly long, but we should be able to do a U-turn in the back. Yeah, I think we'll see what kind of trouble we get into here. Anything could interfere? No, a trailer should be able to turn at 90 degrees.
There's an SCS slow boy. And there's John Ruta's low boy over there. Oh, what are they doing at this Home Depot? Pretty sure that's Ruta's low boy. Let me see at the back of it. I think so. <coughs> okay, we gotta start thinking about getting this thing turned around in here. got in here to get this done. Oh yeah, I think we're going to be fine. Easy peasy. Now uh, let's see that low. I always want to go in high reverse. I don't know what that is. visitor. There we go. Oh, that's pretty sloppy parking job. Let's fix that up. That's better. Yeah, the uh, wheels on that trailer are pretty wide. They're wider than the truck, but it looks worse than it is. All right, there we go. Safe and sound. Idaho Falls to Twin Falls. Ooh, look at the money. Wow. Those are yesteryear's wages. Wow. Good thing I don't have realistic fuel economy turned on. <laughs> Wild. That, we would fill up right now. We would uh, use that much in fuel. Holy. That's weird. Okay. Well, only buy this trailer or use this trailer if you're uh, well off. <coughs> yeah, you can see the um, offset trailer uh, airlines here, which is good. And the winch comes out here, and that roll on the back of the truck is where the uh, that roll under there is where the uh, you went, you know, the cable runs on to pull it up. And then on the deck of the trailer, you can see there's a roller there and a roller there, and one on the back. So you can, uh, it's really an efficient way to move things around, long things. You just winch them up on there. You don't need a crane. You just use that winch on the truck, and you just drag big things onto the trailer tie it down take it where you're going and tie it to something and drive away and you know it's pretty amazing setup it's a lot of it's good quite often a truck like this would have a swamper to help the guy running the winch so he's out at the on the end of the cable hooking it to things and whatever like uh, depends how much hooking they got to do but uh on an oil field sow you definitely have a swamper with the driver and uh, they work as a team. Pretty cool stuff, though. But anyway, uh, thanks for riding along, guys. And I uh, really appreciate it. And as always, take care. We'll catch you on the next one. Bye for now.